Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, you're watching a live stream from the Zero Project Conference 2023. Uh, it's a conference taking place at the UN uh, here in Vienna. It runs from the 22nd to the 24th of February. And I have the pleasure to talk to uh, very competent guests on assistive technology. I would like to wi welcome Wei Zheng from uh, the WHO, uh, Luc de Vite and uh, Eva Dian Hogerwerf. Let's jump in right away. Uh, why why don't, don't you start with a brief introduction of, your, of yourself? Thank you very much, Wilfried, and thank you for Zero Project uh, for inviting me to, to this uh, very exciting event and have this uh, talk with uh, uh, my colleague uh, uh, Luke and also Eric Yang. Um, my name is... Uh, sorry. My name is Wei Zhang. I'm a technical officer working in the Access to Assistive Technology program in the World Health Organization based in Geneva, Switzerland. And uh, my responsibility in the team is to uh, support the development of the guidelines, the norm, and the standards, and also supporting countries to improve access to assistive technology. Wonderful. Thank you so much. Luke, please, go ahead. Yeah, thank you very much. Um, it's indeed an excellent uh, opportunity to be here in this exciting environment with so many people around. Uh, my name is Luc de Witte. Uh, in my daily life, I work as a professor of technology for health and care uh, in The Hague. But um, why I'm here is that I'm president of a global organization called Global Alliance of Assistive Technology Organizations. Uh, and it's a combination, an umbrella of professional bodies uh, of experts in this field and we try to um, yeah, join and share our expertise to f promote this field further, and that's uh, really needed. But we'll talk about that a little bit later. Thank you. Eva Dian, please go ahead. Good morning, everybody. My name is Eva Dian Um I work in Italy in an assistive technology center where we are, so we are service providers. Um, and I'm also Secretary General of GATO, the same organization Luke was just talking about, the Global Alliance of Assistive Technology Organizations. Um, we're here also because we are, are part of the editorial board of the Global Report that we're going to discuss now. Wonderful, thank you so much. So, we're talking about this. This is a Global Report on Assistive Technology. It has been uh, published last May, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, and so what are the, are the milestones? Why is it different from, uh, from other reports which have been published? Yeah. Thank you. I think um, I was uh, very lucky and uh, privileged to work on this report alongside a lot of uh, brilliant people over the last uh, three and a half years. And if I have to say, what is the milestone? I would say um, the, the evidence we showcased in this report through a global effort. We all know from long that the need of assistive technology is huge and there is still impairment amount of, uh, uh, of effort that needs to be done. However, this is the first time through this report we put a number behind this huge global need, which is 2.5 billion people globally need assistive technology. And I think this report set milestones uh, in the global assistive technology sector, and it also paves the way for the future of a development of what are the priorities, what are the actions to take across different sectors. So that is uh, my uh, takeaway message. Very if good. I have to name <laughs> one thing, that is the data and the evidence behind it. Excellent. Thank you. Luc, if uh, Diani wants to add to this. Well... <laughs> basically can only agree. Uh, I think this is the first effort from a, from a research point of view, the first effort study that is so big uh, that resulted in, in data that nobody can deny. And we know now that in many countries using, because people uh, or countries use different statistics and different de definitions of disability and need, and that we know in many countries the, the estimates of the number of people are just too low. And nobody can deny that anymore. <laughs> we now see that in every country across the world, uh, the, the number of people is uh, somewhere between 5 and 15% of, pe of the people in any country need assistive technology. And that is, uh, I think, the most important finding. The other element is that we have a number of um, uh, recommendations that are really broadly uh, supported and, and agreed upon. Uh, because there have so been so many people, experts, organizations have been involved in this process that 
maybe that's the second strong uh, element that, that we now really have something to build on and in that respect it is the really a baseline uh, on which we can evaluate and, and uh, yeah, any further actions in the future so we now know what what to work towards and I think that's that's hugely important thank you uh, Ivet Jan, uh, the WHO and also GATO are both global organizations, but of course on a different magnitude. So how, how did you do all the, all the field work? How was this, uh, this coordinated? Uh, oh, that's maybe a uh, question that, uh, that I can uh, better answer to. I mean, what we, what we did from our side was to, um, to collect all the experiences uh, that we were aware about, uh, also the good practices, uh, to collect also real stories of people that actually uh, started to use assistive technology and which, thanks to assistive technology, um, really got new opportunities in their lives. Um, also, to get back to your first question, uh, Wilfried, I think, uh, a land I mean, this is a milestone because a milestone is a sort of a landmark in a process, there's a, in, a, in, a, in a pathway. Uh, there's a, a before and an after. Uh, a milestone and I think um, after this report it's very difficult to deny that actually uh, assistive technology is a game changer mm, it, it, it is a milestone in the, the changing perception of disability <coughs> leading away from the idea that um, a specific functional difficulties or disability leads to a sort of a predetermined destination in life um, thanks to assistive technology, um, people can participate to activities and participate like anyone else. And this report makes it very clear, and nobody can say, I didn't know it. Or, um, so I think that, that's the point that's uh, why it's so important that this report was written and that it's so much based on evidence, like what I said. Thank you, brilliant. Uh, so to what extent does it pave the way now for, for policies? What's, uh, what's happening next? Yes. Uh, I think as what we have highlighted in the last uh, uh, response to your, to your first uh, question, uh, the data, that is the evidence. I think the data is also the power to engage more conversation and a more targeted conversation. So that is uh, the, the first thing that we brought up uh, to the uh, to the light that policymakers, practitioners, researchers, anyone engaged in the uh, assistive technology sector and improving the system can use this as the guiding, uh, as the guiding um, evidence and to pave the way for their discussion. So that is the first thing I would like to highlight as the contribution of this report. And also as Everett Young and uh, Luke mentioned that in the development of the report, we have collected a lot of field experience. What has been tested, what worked, and those are being brought up in this report with a comprehensive discussion. And that is a a wealth of knowledge and the resources for the different sec uh, for different players in the assistive technology to look at and to um, apply that in their own context. And this is also paving the way for the future development of assistive technology that we can continue grow those experiences and share those experiences across the sector and globally. Thank you. I mean, we have at the Zero Project, of course, we also uh, collecting evidence of uh, of innovative practices and uh, uh, and policies. Uh, so, look and uh, and and Eva Jan, what would be now the, the the next step? Basically, I mean, we have seen now uh, apparently uh, a big amount of of valid data, uh, good, let's say, practical experiences. What would be the next step for uh, for for policies and uh, and practices? Um, the global report is an extremely comprehensive report. Uh, there's so much in there. It's not something that you can just read in one breath. It's, uh, it's a kind of a document that you should uh, um, read in different moments, start to appreciate, um, chew, um, leave it on your desk for a while and then retake it at hand and read other sections and chapters. And then the ideas will come up, I'm sure. Um, there's no sort of a, a single, 
let's say, next step that everybody should do. Everybody should read it and everybody should think in their own context how this actually can be rolled out. Because the factors that are impacting on access to assistive technology are many. Uh, it, it is, what, what the report also makes clear is that it's not an easy process. I mean, the concepts are quite easy, but it's very difficult to implement it. It's very difficult to make sure that everybody that can benefit from assistive technology gets the most appropriate solutions. And um, there are economic aspects, there are legal aspects, there are financial aspects, there are uh, health-related aspects, there are social aspects. So. I mean, everybody should work together. So, I mean, my first <coughs> next step, if I were to start with assistive technology in my context, would be to start to identify who are all those actors and how we can collaborate in making this actually happen. Because it's not just in the hands of one or two organizations or, 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 or bodies. Uh, it is really teamwork to make this uh, happen. Thank you. Uh, look, a question for you. Um, assistive technology has been moving away from, from being analog and very physical to being, being digital. So to what, what extent is digitalization, which uh, really you know, is, is a big part and became a big part of our daily lives, to what extent uh, plays it a role in the, in the next steps? Uh, well, <laughs> that's again a difficult question. Um, it, it, it's not just one thing, but, but digitaliz digitalization is of course happening everywhere. And it's also uh, getting into the field of assistive technology. And many uh, digital devices that, that we are familiar with uh, are transformed into digital uh, to assistive devices. Uh, the, the smartphone can, can help us in many, many ways. Um, <clears throat> but it's also um, a potential problem because we also have, we know that there is a kind of digital divide. Uh, and, and by introducing more and more digital solutions, you also have the risk to um, exclude certain groups. And one of my concerns, but personally, but when I look at the data in the global report, that there is a huge problem uh, everywhere in the world, but mainly in developing countries, low middle income countries. Uh, and these are exactly the settings where the digitalization is not so easily uh, done. <laughs> uh, so, uh, I'm, I'm, yeah, we have to find a kind of balance between stimulating this, these digital solutions, but not forgetting the very basic things. Uh, I did a lot of work, for example, in, in the rural areas in India, where there is not even, an, uh, yeah, not even a phone network available. We, we think it is, but, but in many places it's not. Uh, and people need very basic mobility solutions. So finding that balance is one of the challenges. Uh, and I think that's an important point uh, for the WHO also to take into account when discussing the next version of the uh, uh, pre the assistive prior products priority list. Uh, uh, that's the wrong term, but, but you know what it is. <laughs> uh, so, so the, which is a report showing what, what should be minimally uh, available everywhere. Um, I think looking at that balance is, is quite important. And in some meetings, I sense a tendency to think that digital solutions will solve everything. That's definitely not true. Thank you. Maybe you want to add to this? <laughs> yes, uh, I, I do want to add to, to that point. It's a very good point. Luke mentioned that uh, while well, we adopt digital technology, that we should not create a digital divide um, because of the, 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 the access. Um, and there in WHO's uh, approach to improve access, we always look at uh, the five pillars with the people's need as the center, and it needs to be supported that by the right policy, the right product, and the related provision uh, that would enable the use of the product and the competent personnel or workforce to ensure the product and the services are available and fit for purpose. So when we are looking at what a digital assistive technology can support, and we are not uh, only looking at the technology itself about uh, in, in the sense of a product, but it should be uh, made in the full use of how digital technology can enable the access in all aspects. So the, 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 the digital technology is not only the app, as an assistive product, but it, it can be used to enable the services uh, to make those a simple product 
available, accessible to the people living in a remote area or have a difficulty to access them before. And so those are the thoughts behind the digital and assistive technology, a good marriage to improve the access from all aspects. Thank you. So, Eva Jan, what, uh, what do you think is, uh, is a barrier uh, in the implementation and, uh, and to advance assistive technology? Um, thank you for that question, uh, uh, Wilfried. Mm, I, I recently, yesterday actually, uh, not the day before yesterday, had the opportunity to, uh, to talk at uh, a seminar at the University of Bergamo. And uh, I had a conversation with the audience on afterwards, after my speech on, on the global report, uh, on what they consider the main barriers. And you have to know that Bergamo is one of the wealthiest cities of uh, the north of Italy. And it's also the cultural capital 2023. And we, we tried to address it from also from a cultural perspective, the whole topic of assistive technology and disability. And I was surprised to learn from them, uh, although actually thinking deeper about it, it was not a surprise, that they considered stigma still one of the main, the major barriers. So it's not, the technology is not the problem. The, uh, of course, there are innovations and, 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 and et cetera, et cetera. Um, and digital technology makes it more complex and more, more difficult to provide and, and also to adapt to changing situations. But at the same time, the provided access to or supported to have access to technologies are still the same. And, and stigma is very strong in that. Uh, so that, 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 that was actually quite interesting to, 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 to discuss because as long as it's considered only an issue of the person with a disability and maybe his doctor, then we won't get away with it. Uh, it should be clear that um, providing access to assistive technology to all, to appropriate assistive technology is, is really uh, not only a human rights issue, but it's also an issue for the development of sustainable societies, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So, everybody. And the, the the interesting thing is that the general public is more aware of the role, the empowering and enabling role of assistive technology than our policymaker seems to be, and that is probably because they they yeah they still consider disability not as you know a, a, as a problem instead of as a resource. So there's a lot of work to do. Thank you. Ray, you want to add to this as a uh, as barrier of, of implementation? I, I think that's a very important point about uh, continue combating stigma and the engaged user. That's are also, those are also the recommendations of the global report. Um, users are the, the, the resources that we should learn from, from their experience, because improving access to assistive technology is for them and for their families. So you engage users from the, um, from the stage of a policy discussion, planning, design of the program until uh, the, the local or the field practice, uh, how to provide the right product. I think uh, users are the very important group to be continuously engaged in all aspects of assistive technology. Thank you, Luke. Um, go ahead. Yes, of course. Yeah, sorry. I think this is a, a hugely important topic, Definitely. and it's not only stigma. It's also uh, the, the way we look at at disability in our societies. Uh, and I'm always surprised that it is seen as a, as a kind of medical thing. Uh, that, uh, and most of the the, the in interventions we have come from a medical background, uh, often uh, uh, related to rehabilitation. Uh, but I think you should approach it from a very different. Perspective, uh, for example, uh, yeah, um, the, the, as, as a human right, but even more fundamental, uh, in uh, every country invests in education. Nobody questions that, uh, and for me, it's 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 very very similar thing. Uh, assistive technology is essential to be able to to develop yourself, and uh, um, just like education. So I don't understand why we tend we we keep looking at it as as a as a personal thing that needs to be solved in a kind of medical way with a solution, I think we should turn that perspective. Mm -hmm. That is maybe the most fundamental barrier. Mm -hmm. yeah, that is maybe cultural or, and, and how, how to do that, I don't know. Mm -hmm. But this is, for me, the most fundamental problem we face. It's definitely a change in mentality and, uh, and, uh, and uh, a really profound, different approach. 
Yeah, I agree with Luke. And, and the good thing is, is that the global report is full of that message. Uh, I have to congratulate the World Health Organization by uh, adopting such an, an open uh, intersectoral approach to the whole topic of... Uh, so, congratulations, uh, Bay. <laughs> Where are you? Are there any any let's say specific recommendations in the in the in the report? And uh, if yes, what are they? Um, there are ten key recommendations. Uh, I I think I can remember <laughs> every single of them <laughs> after we three and a half years. <laughs> yeah, it's a developed uh, uh, with the contribution from more than five hundred contributors, and we discussed those recommendations across the globe through six regional consultation and the two global consultations. Um, so in those recommendations, I think very important from the very first thing, we emphasize the multi-sectoral collaboration. As a look and Everett Young also emphasized, um, assistive technology is about a person's health and well-being. It is about access to education, to work. It is about participating in family life and the social activity. So it is access to assistive technology. It is a fundamental human right, as Luke uh, mm -hmm. has already mentioned. So from that perspective, um, even though I'm working in WHO, we are uh, working, focusing on health and well-being. But that work to really uh, improve the access, we need to engage with all the relevant development sectors and that conversation should happen. And we should see that from a person's pathway from the very beginning. It's, it is probably about health, but it is also about their personal life, living a dignified and also independent productive life. So I think that is a very important message. And if I can highlight another thing, I will not say all the 10 mm -hmm. recommendations, but I'll no, highlight please, another please. thing. It's a continue investing in data, evidence, good practice, and continue innovating as the, what we are doing now right. with the Zero Project, because those are solutions will need to evolve with the changing environment, with the changing need of the population. And those practices should be globally shared and international collaboration is very important across the border north-south collaboration, but very importantly is that the solution developed in one part of the world can also make an impact in the other part of the world, and uh, those uh, solutions can be scaled up globally. So I would like to just uh, emphasize this uh, from the good. recommendation, but I encourage everyone to read the, re the report and uh, uh, to learn all the, um, uh, all the um, good ideas that we shared in this work. Very good. You with Jan? Um, I think there's still a lot to do in um, in shaping our thinking around service provision. Um, assistive technology comes with services, services to especially to assess, to identify, to support the person, to identify the solutions that best could suit his or her needs. Uh, and how that is done and under which conditions and with which kind of professionals is, um, uh, is, 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 is a topic that we definitely have to work on. Uh, there is a lot of good practice out there. There are AT centers that work with multidisciplinary teams. We have specialists. Of course, also the digitalization sometimes make this more complex because digitalization also comes with more complex technology sometimes. Mm -hmm. Um, so, uh, but all, all the factors that impact on the successful use and adoption of AT and, and the continuous use of AT in a specific context uh, need, to be, need to be considered. So, um, service provision is, an, uh, is a definitely an, an important point that we, um, yeah, we need probably also guidelines and I'm happy to announce that we started working on that <laughs> <laughs> uh, <laughs> together with uh, uh, Gato, uh, with a team of researchers, and together with the World Health Organization and with funding from the Global Disability Innovation Hub. So um, we look forward to make that a uh, success. Very good. Look, you want to add to that? No, uh, th this is one of the many things that needs to be done. Uh, mm -hmm. One of your earlier questions, what, what's the next step? And I think there is not a next step. Th for me, this is the start of, of, a, of a collective march. <laughs> Very good. <laughs> uh, and and uh, yeah, 
there's so many things that we need to do. Mm -hmm. yeah, but these are definitely good building blocks to help others to, to go in the same direction. We have the, the, the feeling once you have a, you know, a different project and it's uh, finally done and it's, uh, it's in print and it's out there, uh, what's your, your personal takeaway from it? I mean, having invested much time and, and resources into it. So what's your personal takeaway? Yeah, I think I would like to say the same. The pub publish of this report is uh, it's probably an end of a three and a half year project, but it is absolutely just at the start of a global um, initiative, a global campaign that we should make change on the ground. So uh, I think the takeaway from me is that through the development of the global report, we learned so much, but that was also the opportunity we uh, collected so much good experience and also uh, the organizations and the individuals who are willing to work together. So this is a good effort and I think this effort should continue uh, in, the, in the next years to really make those good practice uh, work in the ground. So that's my takeaway. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Well, I have a personal takeaway. For, for me, the, the data presented in the report um, are totally unacceptable. If, if you see the, the, the inequalities in the world and, and the number of people with serious needs that are not met, I think as a, as a, as a human being, I think that's totally unacceptable. And it's a bloody shame that, that so many of us accept that. Mm. Because there is no need. We have plenty of money. We have all the solutions available. We just have to do it. It's not easy, but, but there's no reason why we should, can say this uh, should not be done. And that's my personal thing. So mm -hmm. it motivates me a lot to continue as long as I can in this <laughs> field. Very good. Ewart Jan? Um, w w what I would say uh, as, as, as a personal takeaway is that um, what I very much appreciate in the field of assistive technology is that it's, that it's based on swarm intelligence. So swarm intelligence is, is the intelligence of a lot of um, uh, people that collaboratively work together to try to bring forward a field and moving more or less into the same direction. And I think that is uh, that is fantastic uh, a learning process. Um, assistive technology requires bottom-up approaches, the involvement of everybody, end users, of course, but also professionals, uh, companies, um, <coughs> policy makers. Everybody can do uh, its share uh, as long as we move into the same direction. And um, I think the global report helps with that. Thank you so much. Uh, we not only have this interesting discussion going on, but we also have our graphic facilitation. Uh, and Petra is going to do uh, the summary of the, of the session. Please, go ahead. Thank you. Global report on assistive technology. Um, we heard that this is the first collection of swarm intelligence, um, of uh, know-how from people all around the world, um, on showing us on how important assistive technology is and that there are solutions. <coughs> so um, we heard from an editorial board that was um, making sure that everything is collected properly. And um, the findings are terrific and so I important for the community because we found out that now no country in the world can deny that there are people with disabilities in a very significant, significant amount so that they are relevant for all aspects of life. So you cannot deny the needs of people with disabilities. Um, what's the impact? Um, policies are being influenced and hopefully established and changed based on the results. Um, and we learned that with, um, with the power of the data and the collected experience, um, there will be power to make these changes. Uh, what I found very interesting or uh, important to uh, point out is that we're not only talking about uh, digital solutions, but we still have to keep in mind the basic assistive technology that has already been in place and can still be in place. And the digital solution is 
another add-on. So there has to be a balance between both of them. And we have to make sure we don't come up with a digital divide. Um, yeah, the data evidence, 2.5 billion people around the world are affected. So they are our target group and they need the solutions that must be created. Um, one, uh, yeah, two last things. Uh, first of all, uh, Wilfried also asked about barriers. And I think we can point out that stigma was like one of the biggest. So within the countries, within the minds of people, stigma towards people with disabilities <coughs> is still one of the biggest barriers. And again, the power of the data and the evidence can make a change. Um, it all was teamwork to come here. So it brought this report up. And with teamwork, um, we can make change happen. And we must know that accessibility is a fundamental human right. Brilliant, as always. Thank you. Thank you so much. This concludes our session on assistive technology. We have been presenting the results of the global report, which is a WHO uh, publication contributions from, uh, from GATO. I want to thank you, my distinguished guests, uh, for shedding light on a very into important topic. And remember, we have a common goal. We fight for zero barriers. Thank you so much. <laughs>